Hello, Barry Winbolt here again with ideas to help you get a better handle on life. Today I'm going to be talking about saying sorry. There are some strange ideas around that in our cultures and it's also generally underestimated just how important it is. Have you ever wanted to say sorry but you've been held back? Maybe you thought the other person should say it first, that apologising would make you appear weak or that the problem was in the past and now it's just too late to say sorry. There are many situations where we could apologise but fail to and just as many good reasons not to, or so it seems. An apology is often all it takes to start a healing process, to relieve tensions to calm resentments. It can strengthen a relationship, rebuild trust, reconcile differences and clear up misunderstandings. And yet the power of apology is often underestimated. It's essential to resolve a conflict or ask forgiveness, yet apologising is often discouraged and in some cases even prohibited. Making an apology has been called one of the most profound human interactions, but it's one which is also greatly misunderstood. So we don't use it as often as we could, or even should. We can all think of festering grudges that have tarnished or even destroyed a relationship. Many of us can remember a situation where we could offer an apology, but have chosen not to. Well, I can. Sometimes we recognise that a sincere expression of regret has unparalleled healing properties. But more often, we choose to ignore this and instead find excuses to justify our refusal to make amends. I've seen a lot of this in my conflict resolution work, that people will squirm and turn in all directions rather than simply saying, I'm sorry. And all that is needed is those two little words to start the ball rolling and start more productive conversation between the two offended parties. So what stops us? Saying sorry can be a powerful first step to remedy a troubled relationship. But we generally have a range of reasons for not offering it. And these purported justifications are really just excuses. Some of these mistaken beliefs about saying sorry, for example, it means you're taking the blame for something, or apologising makes you look weak, or it puts you in the wrong and open to attack. Or some people have even said it lets the other person off the hook, or they fear that the other person will retaliate. Some feel that saying sorry will make them look guilty, and others find out that if they say sorry, they're suddenly not going to feel so perfect after all. These may seem valid, but a bit of soul-searching will reveal that we use them to protect ourselves from having to say we're sorry. Even if some of these excuses were accurate, that still doesn't justify refusing to apologise, if that's the one step it takes to repair some damage. Taking responsibility for this can be a difficult first step and it's probably one of the main reasons that we're slow to act when we need to apologise. Remember that very often in a dispute emotions are aroused and the last thing we're going to do when we're upset like that is take responsibility for our own behaviour. Taking responsibility means acknowledging your contribution to the problem. It doesn't make you to blame for the problem and it doesn't make the problem only yours to resolve. Taking responsibility means you are taking steps to restore the relationship to something which will allow you to discuss things in a mature and open manner. There's an important distinction here. When I say responsibility, for example, for my part in an argument, and I apologise for my behaviour, that doesn't mean that I assume total responsibility for arguing. That should be shared between both parties. And never should there be any talk of fault or blame. That only leads back into the mire of who is right and who is wrong, which merely prolongs the argument. Taking responsibility means having the self-awareness and maturity to act according to your values with honesty and integrity. 
It means acknowledging who you are and taking ownership if something you said or did offended or harmed another person or others. That can feel a bit uncomfortable, but it's a character-strengthening act and generally earns you respect. When you appreciate just how important apologising is and want to do something about it, this can be a steep learning curve. The excuses I've just given you are tenacious, and in some work and professional cultures, competition and adversarialism are the rule, so saying sorry is frowned upon. It takes the courage of your own convictions to break the pattern and to behave in a way that you think is correct. Aaron Lazar author of On Apology, says, Apologies have the power to heal humiliations and grudges, remove the desire for vengeance, and generate forgiveness on the part of the offended parties. For the offender, they can diminish the fear of retaliation and relieve the guilt and shame that can grip the mind with persistence and tenacity that are hard to ignore. The result of the apology process Ideally, he says, is the reconciliation and restoration of broken relationships. Many relationships could benefit from this process, particularly in the workplace. Yet some business cultures positively discourage apology because they see it as somehow associated with blame or weakness. I know from my own work in organisations over many years that there was such a taboo on appearing wrong and saying sorry, and by the way, those two are not linked in any way in my mind, but there was such a taboo about it that people would almost choke on the word. And it was a real uphill struggle to try and get managers in particular to understand that showing a little vulnerability and honesty about their own shall we say, failures or slight errors, was going to carry a lot of weight with the, with the troops and with the people they managed. But unfortunately, apologising for something at work equals being wrong, and being wrong is not a comfortable place for most of us in a culture that encourages us to be right as much as possible. Privately, we have no such excuse. In families and other close relationships, the ability to show remorse and to apologise when necessary are hallmarks of healthy relationships. When I was doing more live trainings, I often used to joke about the line from the old movie, love is never having to say you're sorry, by explaining that I'd said sorry much more often since I got married than I ever did earlier in my life. If we ignore the power of apology in our close relationships and refuse to say we're sorry when we know we could, then we also have to accept responsibility for the consequences of that decision without hiding behind blame or hurt pride. And if it all goes pear-shaped, well, just remember, maybe sorry at the right time could have helped. So when do you say you're sorry? It's often hard to know when or how to go about it, particularly when the offence happened some time ago. A common response to that is to let sleeping dogs lie. An example of the sort of excuse we use is that there's no point in stirring up past hurt or reminding ourselves and the other person of an unhappy event. In some cases, this could be good advice, but it's also become a self-serving mantra to avoid personal accountability for patching things up. Perhaps you've wanted to apologise for something, but you haven't been sure of how to go about it. It's never too late, and if you feel as if you could apologise, then perhaps you should create an opportunity to do that. By the way, this all assumes that you're apologising for your own mistakes and misdemeanours. So be clear about who and what you're apologising for. In this case, apologising is a personal matter between you and the offended party. You're acknowledging your part in whatever the problem was or is and letting the other person know that you regret it and want to make amends. You're opening a door to a conversation. You are not responsible for a group, your ancestors, or even events in history. Such situations need a more formal approach, and they're symbolic rather than personal. 
So whether it concerns a recent event or something that happened between you in the past, apologising doesn't need to be a complicated or drawn-out process. As long as it is genuine, a sincere expression of regret is often the first step to better relations, rebuilding trust and an end to any underlying sense of tension or guilt that you may have been feeling. For example, a simple opening could be, there's something that's been troubling me about situation X. I know we both suffered and I'd like you to know how sorry I am for my part in it. Or... We don't seem to have been getting along as well as we used to. I'm sorry about that, and I'd like to do something about it. This expresses regret for the failure of the relationship, but it doesn't say, and it's all my fault, and by the way, nor does it say, and it's all your fault. It avoids that entirely. Saying we are sorry, particularly when you're taking responsibility for having wronged someone, is a mark of strength. It may seem easier just to let things pass, to assume that time will heal and that a misdemeanour will be forgotten. But forgotten doesn't mean healed, and as history shows us, the resentment and bitterness can remain long after the event which originally caused the bad feeling has been forgotten. Learning to apologise with sincerity is a personal choice and one that can go a little way to correcting the wider social shortcoming of refusing to say sorry. An apology serves several purposes. It demonstrates contrition, offers atonement and also shows, if properly crafted, that we have taken responsibility for our actions. We must first accept and own what we have done and the consequent hurt or distress we've caused the other person. Hedging our apology with justifications, buts or excuses merely shows that we're not sincere and invalidates our efforts. An authentic apology is genuine and unconditional. It's a personal matter in another way too. There's no way of knowing whether the person you're apologising to will accept your apology and they may not thank you either. When making amends this way, the only satisfaction may be that you know you acted in good faith and for the right reasons. Who could you say sorry to to brighten both your days? I'm coming to a short list of do's and don'ts. See what you think. And if you're still hooked on winning, remember that somebody once said, an apology is a good way of having the last word. So what should you do if you're thinking of crafting an apology? Well, first you need to recognise the power of an apology. Make sure that you mean it. Sincerity is everything. Acknowledge the hurt and the harm that you may have done. You don't have to name it explicitly, but use general phrases like I realise that this caused deep upset, or I realise this did harm I probably wasn't aware of. Something like that. And by the way, not being aware of it is not an excuse, so be careful about that. Match the right level of formality. The graver the offence, in their view, the more formal the apology should be. And err on the side of caution. They may see it as very serious, even if you don't. Be prepared to explain if it's relevant, but beware of sounding as if you're making excuses. Personally, I'd avoid explanations. If one was asked for, I'd follow it up at a separate conversation. Focus first on repairing the relationship and beware of opening old wounds too early. As I touched on, don't expect thanks or recognition. If they don't accept your apology, take the rejection with dignity and just know you did the right thing. Give them time. It can be almost as hard to accept an apology as to give one. You'll have been thinking about it for some time. They may need time to digest what you've said before accepting it. And show genuine remorse. 
an arrogant apology is worth than no apology at all. Among the things you shouldn't do, well, don't expect miracles. You may be ready to say sorry, they may not be ready to hear it. And don't link the apology to an excuse or justification. When making an apology, don't rush it. You may feel nervous, but speak clearly. Mumbling or hesitation will weaken the message. Rehearse it a little if you need to. Don't make it appear that they are to blame, even if they are partly responsible. Remember, you're apologising for your part in the hurt or the upset and expressing regret that it happened at all. That doesn't mean you've got to blame anyone. And finally, don't put it off. If it's going through your mind, if this is ringing any bells with you, it probably needs an apology somewhere. Take a little time, plan it, and use the sort of approach I'm talking about here. In this episode, I've explained why I think an, an apology is important and how to go about making amends. It takes personal maturity and wisdom to offer a sincere apology and also a degree of patience and acceptance. It really is a mark of maturity and wisdom if you're able to do that. When you offer an apology, the recipient is under no obligation to accept it. It could be that apologising is only the first and necessary step in a longer healing process. This is particularly the case in a situation where strong emotions like anger and hurt have been present, especially if it's built up over time. Apology is generally underrated, for sure. But you can be sure that knowing how to apologise with dignity and grace will always be a characteristic worth nurturing. So if you have any questions on this or any other topic, please email me at info at and I'll get back to you almost by return. Sometimes it takes a day or two, depending on how busy I am, but I will respond. So that's all from me, Barry Winbolt, for this episode. I've put a link in the blurb about this episode with a download which explains those do's and don'ts, so you've got a written version if you need it. If you found this episode useful, please pass it on and maybe subscribe to my channel. And so, until next time... This is Barry Wimbaud saying thank you for joining me and over and out.